What's up YouTube friends? Now this is our bench on our bottom deck and for some reason, even though it's shady most of the day, we hardly ever use it down here. To me, it's just very uninviting with that hard wooden bench. So today, I'm going to show you how to make these quick and easy outdoor pillows. I used polyester outdoor napkins for the fabric and I stuffed it with a very special surprise. I'm sure some of you can guess what it is. I'll show you how fast and easy it is to whip up next. So the things you're going to need to make these outdoor pillows are, today I'll be using these napkins. Now I got these at Tuesday morning and recently I found out that both of our Tuesday mornings here in Omaha closed up. Now mother and I did go there last week and they were down to slim pickings. The lady told us they were closing down for about a month and everything was pushed to the front of the stores and they were actually taking shelves out as we were shopping. So I'm sure by now everything's gone. But I do have a little haul video coming up as well as a Goodwill haul video. I'm going to combine the two so you can see what I got at Tuesday mornings. Now these originally were $9.99. I ended up getting two packets of these. And I believe these were 60% off. A lot of the stuff that we did buy there was 70% off. And some of the little stuff just rang up as free. Now this is a set of six polyester napkins. They are 18 by 18, and like I said, I got two packs of these, and my plan is to get four pillows. Now to stuff my pillows, I'm gonna use good old plastic bags. You know mother can never throw these away. If you'd like to see a video on how I make my plastic bag holders, I'll go ahead and leave the video right here in the iCard. I'll also be using my iron and ironing board sewing machine with matching thread. I'm just going to use cream and today I'll also be using my serger but that's not necessary. So let's get started. Now the very first thing I'm going to do before I even start cutting is I'm going to give these a good press. Now like I said these are 100% polyester so you're going to want to use a lighter heat maybe in the middle section of your iron and I just like to spray a little bit of water on here and just iron it out making sure all your creases are gone. Now these napkins are already hemmed and I am going to use that to my advantage a little later on. But for the front piece of my pillow, I didn't even want to bother with these. So I went ahead and I cut my napkin down to 17 inches by 17 inches. And that's what I have right here. Now I'll be making the envelope style of pillowcase today. If you have an existing pillow that you just like to make a cover for, all you're going to want to do is go from seam to seam on your pillows across and from seam to seam on the top. There's really no need to add a seam allowance. You can if you want to, but let's say you have a 16 inch by 16 inch pillow. I would cut my fabric 16 inches by 16 inches. That way when you go stuff your pillow in here, it just gives it a little more fullness and fluff. There's nothing worse than a saggy pillowcase. So now we just need to make our flaps. To find your measurements for the flap, you're gonna half your measurements of our top piece. So in my case, it's 17 by 17. Cut in half, it's eight and a half. Then I'm going to add two inches. So in my case, I'm going to cut my flap pieces 17 inches wide by 10 and a half inches long. So in order for me to get two flaps, I'm going to have to use two napkins, technically three with the top per pillow. Now that might seem like a waste of fabric, but I specifically bought these for this specific reason. So if you want to, you can make these a lot easier. So what I would do is just grab two of my napkins. I'd line them up so that the right sides are touching. And then I'd go ahead and I'll sew all the way around, leaving an opening here at the bottom. That way you can stuff whatever you want into your pillow. Then I'd go ahead and you can either use your machine or hand sew that little opening closed. Now since these are going outside, they're gonna get rained on, probably some mold on them. So I wanna be able to throw these in the wash machine and have them dry out really quickly and if need be I could add more bags. So that's why I'm doing it my way. So now all I'm going to do is I'm going to line up my napkin and I'm going to line it up on the ten and a half line. And I don't know if you can see it very well but the ends here kind of curve in so I'm actually a little over ten and a half. 
So then I'm just going to come with my ruler and cut it off. I lined up my straight line down here on my grid and I'm just going to evenly space this in between on the sides here. So I'm going to take off a little on this side and take off a little on this side and hopefully I'm going to catch all these side seams and hack them off. All right, since we saved that one seam, it's gonna save us a step. But if you're just using yardage, you're gonna to wanna to cut your fabric the exact same measurements that I gave you. And then on the end that you wanna be the top, I'm gonna to fold it over a quarter inch, give it a press, then fold it over again and give it a press and then stitch with a straight stitch, back stitching at the beginning and the end. So now I'm just gonna do the same thing with my other napkin to get my other flap for my pillow. So next I'm going to grab my front piece of fabric, the one that measures 17 by 17 inches squared, and I'm going to lay it so that the right side is facing up. Next I'm going to take one of my flaps, I'm going to line it up at the bottom, and pin. Now I like to really make sure right here is pinned good, so that nothing moves when we're sewing. And then just a couple more here along the bottom. Now I'm just going to take my other flap and do the same thing. So now I'm just going to take this over to my sewing machine and using a quarter inch seam allowance, you could also go up to a half if you feel comfortable. I'm going to start anywhere, doesn't really matter, back stitch, and I'm going to sew all the way around back stitching at the beginning and the end. See you at the sewing machine. All right guys, so I'm over here at the sewing machine. Today I'll be using a straight stitch and my length is a 2.5. And before anybody says anything, yes, this is smaller. I accidentally finished the pillowcases before I filmed my sewing part. And that's what happens when I film two videos at once. You think I'm a professional at this or something. But anyway, like I said, I'll be using a quarter inch seam allowance. I'm going to back stitch at the beginning. And just keep sewing. When I get a quarter inch away from my corner, I'm going to stop with my needle down. I'm going to raise my presser foot and spin. And so. And as always, don't forget to backstitch at the end. All right, so now once you have this all sewed together, you want to make sure that all your flaps got cut up in your seam. And mine are good. So now I'm going to take this over to my serger and I'm going to serge the edges. Now this is going to help a lot with this polyester. As you can see, it just frays like crazy. If you don't have a serger, you could just go ahead and pink around it with your pinking shears or just with a zigzag stitch on your machine. You want to zigzag all the way around encasing that seam and that's just going to keep it from fraying. But since I have a serger, I'm going to use that. All right, so now I'm over here at my serger and I'm just gonna run the raw edge right along the side. I'm not really gonna cut off very much, if at all any. And that is all it cut off. So I'm just gonna do that to all four sides. All right guys, so it should look like that. Now I got a comment recently that asked why I don't show how I finish off my serger seams and it's because I don't do anything to them. Especially with this, you're not really going to see these threads through the fabric so I just leave them as is. But if you want to finish these off to make them look nice, you could just clip your threads and then put a little bit of fabric tack or something like that just to keep your threads glued down. 
or you could get a cheater needle, thread this little tail, and then you just want to run it back down through your stitches here, and that'll finish it off also. But really, you don't have to do anything. So now I'm just going to grab a chopstick here. I don't want to use my bone folder because it has that point. And especially with the polyester, it just pokes right through. So I'm going to flip my pillowcase and then just poke out my corners as best I can. And now you just want to stuff it to the fullness that you like. And actually it takes quite a bit of plastic bags, but thank goodness mother doesn't throw anything away. So now I'm just going to stuff them and I just like to open them up and kind of get some air in them, especially since they've been stuffed in this thing for a while. Right guys, and now our pillow is done. Now I'm probably gonna stuff more bags in here when I get done with the other three. And if you saw this in the beginning, it was pretty full and I used about that many bags for this pillow. Now here's what the back looks like. So I'm gonna get the other three pillows made and I'll show you what they look like out on the bench. All right guys, so here's what it looks like all finished. And I think it turned out great. Now this bench down here that we hardly ever use, it looks very comfy and inviting. And I can't wait to sit down here on a summer's night with a cool drink. I hope you give this quick and easy project a try. If you like this video and wanna see more of my videos, go down below and hit the big red subscribe button and give this video a big thumbs up. If you have a question about this video or any of my other videos, feel free to leave me a comment. Check out all my links down below if you'd like to support this channel. And I also have my Etsy shop open. I'll link that down below. Thank you to everyone who has purchased something already. I really appreciate that. I only threw up a few things right now, but I have a whole bunch more that just needs price and pictures. So stay tuned for that. I hope everyone's staying safe, healthy, and sane this 2020. And as always, thanks for watching. Happy sewing. And I'll see you next time.